Hi guys, welcome back to QNAP Live Broadcast. I'm Sam, the host for your topic today. And today we invited our PM Jason and Tim here because we are going to introduce uh, several of our new stuff. So let's get into the slide. The first one is that we provide you a QTS Hero uh, edition of the NAS. And then we bring you another two spec of the QXP fiber channel card. One is for 16 gig and for two of the connection, uh, connection ports. And the other is the 32, uh, 32 gig for another two co connection port. Mm -hmm. So uh, there will be these uh, two new cars and uh, QTS Hero uh, uh, machine for the NAS. So uh, we will start from the next four point. The first one is we will let you, we will make a simple introduction of the benefit of using the fiber channel and then we will introduce our new card and then of course uh, we will also talk about our uh, the, the, the NAS that is equipped with the QTS Hero version then uh, we will give you the solution of how you can combine these different machines and hardwares together to give you a better experience while using all of our QNAP products mm -hmm. so uh, Jason please start yeah. Okay, so there are many uh, businesses actually that are already using fiber channel solution in their uh, organization. And uh, actually there are various uh, benefits when why business uh, would adopt or is going to adopt fiber channel because uh, it's, it's not only just scalable. We know that if you look at the fiber channel uh, speed history and uh, the roadmap, you will see that uh, uh, last year there's already the fiber channel 64 gigabit coming out and then uh, this year and later in the next few years it's gonna go to 128 or 256 gigabits in fiber channel so uh, the trend is still continuing and uh, in fiber channel it is uh, very good uh, to connect very simple to connect uh, each other between the servers and the storage devices uh, so it can be attached and de dis uh, detached anytime very easily and the fiber channel is also the fiber channel stand is also good in terms of uh, expandability is that uh, you can at any time because there's no interruption of the network you can at any time expand the capacity storage uh, network by adding more storage servers to it now uh, to share the data with uh, fiber channel devices and servers and also with your clients are also easy because uh, uh, with fiber channel the data sharing ability is uh, much better and faster compared to the ethernet so uh, the performance you will see later in the slides uh, will compare the performance against ethernet so that you can see the benefits of uh, fiber channel same okay and then later on uh, team uh, will also introduce you uh, in what kind of other fiber channel applications can be used in various areas so not just storage but also for example in uh, video editing right yes. okay so let's uh, see the difference between fiber channel and iSCSI so fiber channel you will use the fib fiber cable here on the top you see that they are very thin ones and uh, each the connector on each end will be called a little connector LC uh, LC connector so uh, this is what ca the cable you will use and then there are also several different types of fiber, cap uh, fiber channel cables the optical cables you can select and we'll talk more about it later and with iSCSI since it is an Ethernet protocol so you will use uh, different cables one is if you have a transceiver then you can still use the same fiber cable you know, with the LC connector however uh, you can also choose SAP plus cable or the uh, RJ45 Ethernet cable so there are various uh, cables you have uh, a selection uh, in the iSCSI part uh, and then why uh, fiber channel is a more efficient protocol is that uh, if you look at the right uh, picture is that uh, fiber channel protocol it bypasses the TCP IP and the IP layers so uh, without the extra layers and the overhead fiber channel can actually provide uh, uh, benefits in uh, terms of in terms of performance and the uh, lower latency so that is why many mission criti critical applications or database servers banking uh, systems online transaction systems they will choose fiber channel as their backend to process those uh, very uh, critical transactions okay 
So let's, let me begin by talking about the QNET uh, adapter solutions. So QNET uh, has uh, two fiber channel cards. The first one is a 32 gig. So with the 32 gig fiber channel adapter, as you see from the picture, it has uh, two ports of 32 gig. Okay, this is based on a Gen Gen 6 fiber channel uh, IC inside. So it can support uh, not just 32 gig, but it can also support backward support 16 gig and the 8 gigabit speed in fiber channel. Okay, and we make we made this car in a low profile design so it can be easily fit into any of our NAS models okay now we also provide uh, two 32 gig transceivers so when you uh, purchase it you can use it right away uh, this is a short wave lens so uh, you can use it in the uh, in the building itself okay uh, if you want to use it in a long distance, there's a, a different type of transceiver you will need to purchase and uh, use it. And uh, we provide uh, different uh, brackets so you can uh, replace the bracket to be used in different NAS model because we have a different sizes of a QNAP NAS that uh, you may need to change the adapter for it to be fit in. And the car is for QNAP NAS only. so. If you install it on a QNAP NAS and QTS, you can use them, configure it as a fiber channel SAN storage device for your FC SAN. Uh, the card does not work. Uh, the, it's not meant to be put into a Windows or any server, okay, just for QNAP NAS only. Uh, for a 16 gig, it's a dual port 16 gig and with an enhanced Gen 5 solution. So this can support a 16 gig, uh, 8 gig, and uh, down to 4 gig. So if your business infrastructure is still at uh, 8 gig or 16 gig, then the 16 gig adapter is a good uh, uh, candidate for you to uh, purchase and then install it into the QNAP NAS. And uh, the physical dimensions is the same, are the same as the 32 gig. Okay, uh, included accessories are the same with different brackets, and uh, we also provide uh, two of the 16 gig transceivers. So you can use it with optical cable. Okay. Now, how to uh, replace the bracket on the cards is also simple. First, uh, you will need to pull out the transceivers. Okay. And then after you remove the transceivers, you can uh, remove the screw, two of them here on the card, and then replace it with a different transceiver, a different bracket, and then put the transceiver back. Now, uh, we have also uh, provided the LED indicators so you can do uh, troubleshooting by looking at the LED uh, status. For example, if you are, let's say if you, this is a 32 gig adapter, then if it is connected at the 32 gig speed, then the LED one will become uh, green and the fl if there's a data communication, it will, fla it will flash. Okay, and the second LED will remain off. So similarly, if you want to check if it's a 16 gig or 8 gig, you can look at a table and then uh, check uh, the various uh, speed indication. Okay. Now, uh, transceivers, we also sell them as accessories just in case if you lose them or if you accidentally uh, broke them in the future. So we, we provide both 32 gig uh, transceivers and also 16 gig transceivers. And they are all compatible with three different uh, speeds that can be uh, applied in the fiber channel. And uh, for the distance, it can support up to 100 meters in the uh, short distance uh, fiber channel uh, stand, uh, standards up to uh, the highest speed. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are the transceivers we provide uh, as uh, spare parts. Okay, now uh, speaking of the cables, these cables you can uh, purchase them. In the market at uh, many different places, uh, so you you will see these different ON one, ON two. These are multi-mode optical cables. So the most common, I think, nowadays will be the ON three cables, which can provide up to uh, thirty-two gig fiber channel communication uh, within a seventy meters distance. So which is uh, I think should be uh, quite uh, okay for most uh, of your offices. So. This is what uh, kind of cables you would choose to connect between the fiber channel host and the fiber channel NAS. Okay, used by choosing the uh, OM3 cable with the LC to LC connector. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the QTS Hero based NAS, currently QNAP has uh, three different models. Uh, starting from the Night Bay, one U is a TSH977XU RP, and then two models based on the 12 Bay uh, with a 1283XU and the H1277XU with a different uh, processors. So let's take a look look at the specs one by one. Okay, first one is the the TSH1283XU RP based on a Xeon processor. So this is a 2U 12 bit recommend NAS, so it can support 12 of the 3.5 inch SATA hard drives. Mm -hmm. So you can use a very affordable SATA hard drives to uh, store all your data. And uh, the processor is actually a very powerful the young, the server class processor E2236, which provides uh, 6 cores and 12 threads and with a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. And you can also turbo boost to a maximum 4.8 gigahertz when needed. The memory uh, QNAP provides uh, either 32 gigabyte DDR4 or the 120 gigabyte DDR4 with ECC memory support. Okay, so uh, with this uh, memory, if you purchase a 32 gig, you can still uh, later on upgrade it to a maximum 128 gigabyte on this machine. And uh, for the networking ports, uh, you will see that it's not missing. So you see all the common, for example, uh, two of the 10 gigabit SA Plus ports, two of the 10 gigabit base T Mali gig ports with RJ45, and four of the one gigabit ports. So you'll see that uh, uh, many ports and specs are quite good uh, on this model. Mm -hmm. Now the same for the 12 bay model, we replace it with a different processor. This is a desktop version of uh, AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 3700X uh, with an 8 core CPU and uh, up to 16 threads uh, running at 3.6 gigahertz uh, speed and they can uh, boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. And likewise, we provide uh, uh, either 32 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte memory uh, selection. And uh, the networking ports also, you get uh, dual 10 gigabit SA plus and the dual 10 gigabit base T, they can also support uh, money gig. And then dual one gigabit ports here on the AMD Ryzen based uh, QTS Hero 12 bay model. Now for the 9 bay model is also based on the AMD Ryzen 7 processor. So you, if you look at a picture, uh, on the front, you have uh, access to four of the 3.4 inch SATA hard drives. And when you remove the top cover, you have uh, more of uh, the SSDs available. So there are five, five of the, excuse me, five of the 2.5 inch SATA SSDs available for you to uh, install SSD to enhance your performance. Now with this uh, same Ryzen 7 processor and the 32 gigabyte memory, DDR4, you can support, also upgrade it to maximum 128. And the network uh, ports are the same as the 12 bay model, which the, if you look at the two of the 10 gigabit SA plus will be ports. So these uh, are the three different uh, QTS Hero uh, NAS that uh, you can currently purchase from Get. And the next one will be the QTS Hero. We are going to talk about the uh, why the QTS NAS can support the maximum, uh, not just the performance, but also the features that uh, you will get uh, compared to the QTS. So let's send as team, team take over to talk about the QTS Hero, right? So, yeah. Okay, thank you, Jason. Excuse me. Right, guys. Um, QT, QTS Hero is our uh, latest uh, um, firmware update uh, in the, our QNAP NAS, and uh, it equipped the uh, famous file system ZFS. Um, we all know that it has a very powerful features on data protecting. It can have a self healing and uh, it have the uh, this uh, SSD cache and uh, combined with the other features that we already have uh, in 
uh, our QTS, such as like uh, uh, cloud, uh, hybrid cloud, uh, virtualization, and uh, the ability of snapshot. Uh, worth of noting is that uh, for the snapshot capability, uh, because of the design of uh, ZFS, uh, it, it has a block level deduplication. De uh, so once we add uh, one more snapshot, it won't create a double size. It only uh, notes the re record the uh, difference in the uh, block level. So uh, in, ther in theory, you, know, you can have uh, unlimited uh, snapshot. Uh, that's uh, uh, features bring to you by the ZFS and the QTS hero. Besides the uh, file system, uh, we can see QTS hero can be applied on different applications in the business services. Uh, we will show a lot later in to describe some of them. Uh, the, QT, the QTS hero combines with a uh, fiber channel. It <coughs> enables uh, a, a very uh, budget-worthy uh, pro product for enable the uh, FC SAN. Um, before, uh, fiber channel is uh, known for expensive, uh, no matter uh, it is uh, stable and uh, uh, speed uh, fast, but uh, it's very complicated. However, with the QNAP QTS Hero and the new NAS, We'll show you how simple it is, and uh, you can have it all the features with a very low budget. Yeah. So, Tim, if you look at this, uh, this uh, fiber channel uh, infrastructure, is that uh, on the top uh, we see that there's a it can be a maybe Windows or Linux server, right? So, with those uh, the customers, they they have to use uh, uh, either Marvel or Atel, different uh, brands or even Broadcom, those different. Uh, fiber channel adapters for the host. Uh, but uh, for our QTS Hero NAS, then we install the QNAP adapters to get the maximum, uh, I would say maximum budget that you can have to support in this uh, fiber channel set. Because if you look at our uh, fiber channel solution, it's actually quite affordable compared to a uh, traditional fiber channel set storage, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just to tell our users that uh, uh, basically if you're looking for affordable fiber channel sense storage, you be sure to look at our QTS Hero with its uh, advanced uh, features and our NAS and also the uh, fiber channel adapters. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the um, QTS Hero, uh, we already have the uh, iSCSD and fiber channel app, uh, we we'll call it uh, iSCSI and Fiber Channel Manager is similar to the we have in the QTS and uh, the operation is uh, very similar. It's almost the same and uh, I will show you later for the simple operation. The fundamental features are the long mapping uh, so that uh, the long can be mapped to either to iSCSI or to Fiber Channel and the long masking and uh, it, it will set which server will access the LUN. And the FC fiber channel port binding, that means which server can access it, which ports. And for these features, we'll add one layer of security for protect, to protect, protect your data. On the other hand, uh, we also have the feature you can name uh, your fiber channel ports uh, for the WWPN, is very difficult to remember, but uh, we can uh, name it with the alias so that you can easily distinguish the port. 
here is uh, some masking. Uh, you just mask which port left uh, to which server. And also that's a port binding. Uh, this for better security. And I will show you that later. Also, uh, it supports the uh, server the server multipass uh, I/O. It will be set in the Windows Server. Uh, for multipass I/O, is a feature uh, from Windows Server that uh, it's a you can have a redundant uh, a pass so that if one pass is failed and you can always uh, have another pass make sure the network is still working. Uh, on the other hand, it will improve the performance as well. So uh, Fiber Channel with QTS Hero ZFS file system, it is a perfect match for the professional applications because uh, for QTS Hero, uh, the setup of the Fiber Channel is very simple. I will show you later. And uh, for the ZFS file system, it has a high performance with high reliability. And uh, we have a very efficient snapshot in the ZFS system. Uh, we just mentioned that uh, it's a nearly limitless and uh, instant snapshot. OK, let, let's see one example how to apply the fiber channel uh, in the enterprise. Here we see um, for the, for the uh, enterprise scenario, uh, we might have a same fabric that uh, have our online database. Uh, you cannot shut, up, shut it out, shut it, shut it down uh, because it, it is busy working. And with a very uh, important data. Uh, however, what if we need some test or we need to develop some features on this kind of system? How can we do it? How can we do that? Uh, here, there is a demand. We call it copy data management. Uh, the concept is that uh, we don't bother the data which is busy in use. We clone the data and we use it. That's just that simple. The concept is simple, but how do we achieve it? We use QNAP NAS. Here, we firstly, we take a, a snapshot, it's an instant snapshot, and uh, we replicate it to, to clone one uh, into the NAS and uh, restore it into the LUN. Then we use the LUN, uh, we mount the LUN, uh, let uh, the other user uh, to to um, to process it without affecting the original LUN. See, first step, first step we create a snapshot of the LUN which is in use. For example, it might be a database. Then we clone the snapshot. And then we create a long copy and a malice copy to either ISGAS or a fiber channel while the original LUN remains online. And we can perform any operations on this copy LUN without affect the original one. Um, the other um, application we can see in the industry of video editing. For example, like in a TV station, uh, there's a very complicated uh, workflow uh, from the raw video sources uh, to the final uh, broadcast. But for the first step, uh, we put the video sources uh, into the uh, workstation into the storage so that the, the other people can handle it. We call this step called ingest. Um, the, now it's 20, 2020 and uh, we know that for the Olympic game, uh, they are going to use the 8K video, 8K resolution video. 
we take that, for example, um, if there is a 8-hour 8K video, it's the size is around uh, 4.4 terabytes. And uh, for sequential write uh, with a 10 gigabit net, it might take uh, 16 minutes. However, if we use a 32 gig fiber channel, we can uh, minim minimize that as at about uh, 24 minutes. Think of it, uh, it's just a one, eight hour AK, uh, eight hour video, uh, but with the uh, Olympic game, how many sta stadium as uh, having all the programs and how many programs is, uh, need to be added. And uh, I only say eight hour, eight hour AK and 30 minutes difference. And it's not on 30 minutes, minute, it's not 30 minutes for one man. It's for the uh, transcode system and for the uh, nonlinear station, that's a post-production people. So uh, for 30 minutes, we can save a lot of time for many uh, work staff. On the, uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a very common application is uh, on video editing collaboration. Um, usually, we cannot mount one LAN with more than one client. If you do that, I have warned you, because the two clients won't know each other. If you write something into the LAN, the disk will be messed. So uh, we will show you a simple demonstration later and after this page. So when you are ready, please yeah. let me know. And uh, yeah, um, thank you, Sam. I would just like to uh, inform you that uh, we have prepared a tutorial how to um, operate the same loan uh, with different clients because uh, there are specific file system is designed for this kind of operation. And uh, if you search QNAP XN, there's a tutorial about setting up a basic XN environment with QNAP NAS storage and fiber channel. And you will see uh, how to uh, share one LAN with many clients. And then later, I'm I will just show you how simple it is to set up uh, the basic LAN to uh, connect uh, uh, the um, Apple Mac Pro and uh, the Hero NAS. Uh, please note that uh, when I connect it, I use the Thunderbolt to fiber channel adapter. Uh, for now, we only have a 16 gig uh, adapter, so that the performance will be affected by that. Uh, okay, Sam, please. Okay, the screen is switched to the uh, Mac Pro. And uh, here I have the uh, uh, Mac Pro. It's not so new, but uh, workable. And then I have logged into the, and you can see the <coughs> desktop of the QTS Hero is quite similar to the QTS. So I, I think it's, you should be very familiar with it. Here, firstly, I click the iSCSI and Fiber Channel app. And uh, from that, um, I choose the Fiber Channel. I see FC ports, you can see the uh, Fiber Channel adapter. Here, you can see I have named the alias Hero 1 and Hero 2. Where can I set it? Here. If I don't use the alias, then the WWPN is a series of numbers. But uh, I can name it the hero one, hero two. Then, for now, I will uh, create a, a LAN for the uh, connected uh, Mac Pro. 
I already have one uh, that's uh, created before. Now I will create it a new new block baseline. Okay, I have a LAN. And I will use the stick provision, stick provisioning because uh, um, we like to cho chase the performance. So I don't want any uh, virtual calculation uh, will um, affect the, the performance. And I will choose the compression and the deprecation features. And the performance profile, um, it depends on the application you want to use. If you want to uh, use it in the video editing, maybe we'll use a bigger block. But uh, if you want to use a database, maybe you want to do the small, small, smaller one. And we check here, it's automatically checked. Uh, it's a map alone uh, with the fiber channel ports. So for here, what did I edit? I did just added a, I didn't I can add it a name, but I didn't I can leave it there. And uh, I put it a stick provisioning. I can choose compression and the duplication and uh, the block size and the map. And I just click create. Okay, then I will do the Long mapping. I will map for the FC port group. I didn't uh, separate them in different groups, so I just uh, set it as all FC ports, and then I enable it. And for now, I don't need to do the masking because uh, I only have one uh, server. That's it. What did I do? I just uh, press click some buttons and uh, the LUN is created and enabled. It takes um, 20, less than 20 seconds uh, for it, for the Mac OS to uh, be recognized that there is a one new fiber chain, uh, one new storage. But here, we'll wait for some time, uh, let the uh, ZFS to create the, the LUN. The LUN zero was the one uh, we already have. Now I created a new one. Uh, it might take uh, some time. Okay, about like uh, 20 to 30, 30 seconds, uh, the new LUN is created. And when the new LUN is created, and uh, the Mac OS should detect it, it takes uh, about uh, uh, another 20 seconds. Let's see. From the, uh, here is the Apple Mac OS, and uh, let's check. Let's let's go to the um, disk utility. Okay, um, when the Apple Mac OS have detected the storage, it will pop up this box. The disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. It's just like you uh, plug in a new external drive uh, without fo format, it's not, uh, which is not formatted. So first, firstly, we initialize that. And the new um, detected storage is showing here. Okay, then we will erase it with, uh, okay, let's uh, name it like uh, long laundry. Laundry, and uh, choose the file format, then start erase. And they asked me if I use uh, the time machine. No, I don't want. And it's done. And laundry, laundry is there. Let's see from Finder. Oh, 
Okay, we have laundry already mounted. Uh, let's check with I will. I like to check the uh, its performance uh, with Aja. Aja system test. Okay, um, let's choose the long dry. That's here. Open. Uh, what's the which resolution? Uh, 5K, 4 gig. That's, that's fine. Let's start. Let's check. Okay. Right and read, we can see it's about uh, uh, 13 gig, uh, 1.3 gig. Uh, remember that uh, uh, for the connection, we, I used the uh, 16 gig uh, adapter. Uh, so it, it, the performance uh, there is affected by that also. OK. See, what did I do? To mount this um, FC Sun, I just uh, um, click on the UI and the uh, format on the uh, OSX and that's it. You can just use it as a, a extra storage. Just that simple. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. After the demonstration, then we were going to introduce the uh, rack mount types of our NAS that can support the Q, uh, QXB fiber channel adapters. So uh, you can check in the in the chart. So if you are having a x86 structure of the NAS or the recommend type of the NASes, then it is suitable for you to choose our fiber channel card. Mm -hmm. Then Jason will do the rest of the introduction. Yeah, so the previous slide was uh, the recommend NAS with QTS. Mm -hmm. And so this slide is about uh, the desktop NAS with QTS. So besides QTS Hero NAS, actually we also have uh, many uh, NAS models either in recommend and the desktop that can support the fiber channel with these two adapters. Okay, uh, so here are some performance numbers that I want to go over so that you know why your business should choose fiber channel if you have the cap capability. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a dual pole fiber channel and a single pole fiber channel performance data on our 24 bay NAS with a Xeon processor. Uh, so you can see that. Uh, when either at a, a single port or a dual port configuration, the CPU still only being used at a, like a 20% utilization rate. So it means uh, you can use the same NAS for other file serving applications, such as in uh, uh, SMB or NFS or the FTP or even as a web services. So you can use them together on the same NAS. Okay. The next one, this page will show you the lower CPU utilization rate on the fiber channel compared to iSCSI. So here we have a setup the, on the 12 bay NAS with a Xeon processor. When you use a, a 25 gig with iSCSI, the CPU loading is about uh, 10 to 20% higher than the fiber channel with 32 gig. So again, if you uh, looking at your business infrastructure and uh, your your NAS uh, performance, uh, there's some uh, points that uh, it is uh, good to use fiber channel compared to the uh, iSCSI. Okay. And the next page is uh, uh, when you use a dual port 32 gig fiber channel on the 24 bay NAS, then you can get uh, you know when I uh, Tim earlier mentioned about the MPIO right, the yes. multi path server. So when you set up the multi pass on your uh, ser Windows server, for example, with Fiber Channel and the QNET NAS with this uh, dual port 32 gig adapter, then you can have a, a read speed up to uh, 4,797 megabyte per second. And the write performance uh, is about 3,100. And this is all done by uh, RAID 5. So, you know, RAID 5 already takes some, uh, already gives some penalty on the CPU uh, performance. 
So you can see that even on the RAID 5, it can still uh, provide a good uh, fiber channel performance with this 24-bit uh, NAS. Okay? So these are just some uh, performance data that you can, uh, I want to show you about the fiber channel uh, information. So uh, here we have uh, several uh, different, three different models in QDS Hero edition of the NAS that uh, depends, uh, depending on your fiber channel speed environment. If you are looking for a 16 gig fiber channel uh, NAS, then you can choose the AMD based uh, 9 bay and uh, 12 bay models here. Uh, and then if you are looking for a 32 gigabit capable uh, NAS model, choose the 1283XU. And you can see that uh, they all come with a, either a Cisco 8 core and uh, high speed SATA, you know, uh, earlier set, uh, team also mentioned that uh, uh, QDS Hero also has a very good uh, fresh endurance, right? So if you want a high performance, be sure to use all SSDs. You know, QDS Hero with ZFS can have uh, also help you prolong the SSD life. And uh, for the memory models, up to 128 gigabyte is supported. And then uh, besides not just the fiber channel, it can also support the 10 gigabit in either SA Plus or the 10 gb T and the regular gigabit can also be all be supported. So these are all the uh, QTS Hero NAS models we have uh, for introduction today. Yes, mm -hmm. so uh, we will get back to the live. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, after the introduction and the demonstration, if you want to know more about our FC card and uh, the, the NAS that can support the QTS Hero, you can go to our website to check for more or you can connect your uh, domestic uh, distributor or the result for more information and uh, if you like our video please subscribe our youtube channel and we will see you next time on youtube live broadcast bye bye, -bye. bye.